this is your first exposure to horizontal sliding fire doors, I think you might be surprised by what you learn in this short video presentation. Hi, I'm Phil Favreau. During the eight years I served as California State Fire Marshal, I watched the technology of accordion type horizontal sliding fire doors grow from somewhat of a novelty to a practical and reliable approach to solving a vast array of serious fire protection problems. The three primary objectives of this videotape are to assist you, the enforcement official, in understanding how this technology works, where the model codes permit as well as restrict its use, and finally, to point out a few things to look for during your inspections, job site visits, and plan review. The accordion fire door manufactured by the Wandor Corporation is constructed of two separate walls of 24 gauge steel panels. The panels measure four and a half inches wide and are corrugated to add strength. They are individually suspended from an overhead track by a steel pin and roller assembly. Smoke gasketing is provided and on some models there is a special liner on the interior of the door. Between the two walls is a dead air space measuring between six and eight inches. The one door fire guard assembly has listings from underwriters laboratory as a fire door for 20 minutes, for one hour, and for one and a half and three hours. It is also separately listed by UL for compliance to ASTM E119 for fire ratings of up to two hours. The automatic closing system, which we will examine more closely in a minute, is also listed by UL. The listing procedure allows for standard labels to be attached on doors up to the size tested and oversized labels for doors not exceeding 23 feet in height with no restriction on the width. The label is attached at eye level on the lead post. The label on the automatic closing system is attached to the metal box housing the microprocessor, the battery, and the battery charger. Typical locations for this box are either below the header area in the storage pocket or above the header at the stack end of the door. The location of the operating system in a fire protected enclosure should be shown by the architect when drawings are submitted for plan review. Installation of the door should be in accordance with NFPA 80 Chapter 7. The typical header support for all listings is three layers of three-quarter inch plywood covered with two layers of five-eighths inch fire rated jip board. Currently, the UL listing requires that the header be recessed three and a quarter inches above the ceiling line. This U-shaped 16 gauge steel channel allows the leading edge of the fire door to seal properly. Notice that there is no mechanical latching system. The chain drive system holds the fire door in place. Eight pounds of force can release the door from the closed position. Under power assist, by using the actuating device, the force to open the door is only four pounds. This channel is installed only on single parting doors and can be either recessed into the wall or surface mounted. Most accordion fire door installations are designed with a small storage pocket to allow the door assembly to fold out of view. The fire protection rating of the storage pocket material, these walls, should be equivalent to that of the hourly rating on the door. You'll notice that when the accordion type fire door is installed, there's never any need for a floor track. The fire and smoke seal is provided by the fire protective liner on the inside of the fire door. This outer trim piece assists in smoke control, but is primarily used for decorative purposes. All fully completed installations should have the fire protective liner trimmed to maintain light friction contact with the floor surface. This can easily be checked by putting your hand under the outer trim piece and feeling the liner. As an enforcement official, my biggest concern about accepting the accordion fire door for use as a fire protective assembly was not whether the door would stop the fire. I was satisfied with the test reports. My concern was having the assurance that power failure would not render the door inoperable. Let me show you why this can't happen. The one door fire guard assembly is a completely electronically supervised system. Audible and visual fault signals can be enunciated at the door location, at a remote location in the building, or even to a station away from the building if desired. Not only are all integral components continuously monitored, but the integration of the microprocessor enables the door to actually monitor the opening to ensure that it is free from obstructions. This is accomplished by one of two methods. The first is to program the door to complete one opening and closing cycle during a time when the building is unoccupied, typically during early morning hours. If the door encounters an obstruction, an alarm will be sounded. 
The second method of monitoring is by the use of a photoelectric signal. A sensing device is installed inside the lead post that sends a light beam across the opening. Interruptions are monitored by the microprocessor, and if they exceed a preset time, the alarm is sounded. The next generation of this system will likely include the option for telephone wiring to be installed near the control box to allow modem connection to a central monitoring station. Fault signals will alert the building owner, but also be communicated to central service stations where technicians can troubleshoot problems via the internet connection or dispatch local service personnel as needed. The automatic closing system consists of a DC motor, a microprocessor and logic board to control inputs and outputs, DC batteries and a battery charger. All of these components must be located within a fire protected enclosure. Access to this enclosure will need to be provided for final hookup and periodic testing and service. The in-house 120 volt AC system continually float charges the batteries at 13 and a half volts. If loss of AC power occurs, a fault signal is immediately sounded. Then one of two options is available at the discretion of the local enforcement official. The first is to require the door to close automatically immediately upon the loss of AC power. The second is for the door to remain open until power in the battery drops to 11 and a half volts. At this point, the door will close automatically. Independent tests show that a fire guard door installed in a 17 by 9 foot opening still completed 50 opening and closing cycles with storage battery potentials at 11 and a half volts. The batteries are sized so that even after loss of AC power, they can still supply sufficient power to the logic board to continue monitoring inputs and responding to them for up to 63 hours. During plan review and site inspection, you may want to determine the location of the alarm used to identify fault conditions. The alarm is typically located on the lead post or with the logic unit in the storage pocket. For multiple door installations, more sophisticated electronic supervision is available, which includes monitoring from a dedicated PC, which monitors multiple door installations and communicates detailed door status information. Doors can even be remotely operated from this location. Aside from monitoring AC and DC power loss, other supervised fault conditions are battery overcharge and undercharge, high and low AC voltage, limit and other switch failures, drivetrain hindrance, and at least five other vital functions related to the microprocessor. All of these tests are executed by the microprocessor approximately three times per second, with the exception of the battery discharge test, which occurs two and a half times every day. For more reference on fault conditions and a detailed listing of horn patterns, please review the owner's manual, which has been provided along with this video cassette. Supervision is a vital part of many different fire protection systems, for example, fire alarms, smoke detection, and sprinkler systems. Electronic supervision of one door's accordion fire door assembly provides the assurance you need that when a fire starts, the door will close properly. Now that we know more about the construction of the accordion fire door and the automatic closing system, as well as the electronic supervisory capabilities of the system, let's take a close-up look at how the door itself actually operates. We'll begin by simulating a fire condition to see how the door will function. NFPA 80 allows for a closing speed of between 6 and 24 inches per second. If, during the closing cycle, the door encounters an obstruction, it will stop, pause, and then recycled closed. Four pounds of pressure applied to the leading edge post will release the clutch and allow the door to operate manually. Less than 15 pounds of force is required to move the door six feet. When the pressure is released, the door again recycles to the closed position. On all applications where the door is used in the means of egress, special exit hardware is provided. At the discretion of the authority having jurisdiction, this hardware can be placed at any location across the face of the door. Four pounds of pressure exerted in the direction of exit travel opens the door a preset distance, typically 36 inches, where it stops, pauses, and recycles to the closed position. A UL listed vision panel is installed on all doors used as smoke barriers in healthcare facilities. 
It is optional on all other FireGuard applications. Once FireGuard is in the fire mode, it must be manually reset by the lead post reset button. The system can only be reset if the smoke detector or fire alarm system have also been cleared of the condition which initiated the alarm. During inspection, it is possible to simulate a fire condition without putting the entire building into the fire mode. The building maintenance supervisor or the local one-door service representative can show you this procedure. The emergence of the accordion fire door technology over the past two decades has provided architects with greater design flexibility without compromising any aspect of life or building safety. In fact, I believe in many instances, overall fire protection has been enhanced. Horizontal sliding fire doors are regularly specified by design professionals for wide span opening protection in fire resistive construction. Common applications include firewalls, fire barriers, vertical opening protection, and the enclosure of elevator lobbies. In recent years, all of the model building codes have adopted provisions to permit the use of complying doors and exiting applications. And currently, BOCA and FPA 101 and the International Building Code allow unrestricted use of the doors in any occupancy without occupant load limitations. The mainstreaming of these provisions by the U.S. regulatory community would suggest that the accordion-type fire door is a technology whose time has come.